And we're back. And we're back. Yeah. Welcome to the Ooh. Cavalry. We are. That's right. What is this? Episode ninety-five. The big nine-five. Yes, people are starting to talk about. You know, we got to get the cavalry in a home. It's That's getting right. uh, right. it isn't able to support itself anymore. It's too dangerous for it to live alone. <laughs> time, time for the cavalry right. to go go somewhere. Uh, I was just going to say we're barreling towards episode 100. You know, a lot of podcasts. We're a nickel away from the centennial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Saying the, let me find a way to say the same thing, but uh, <laughs> in confusing weird, her. Yeah, in harder way to say it. Uh, <laughs> but we, a lot of podcasts would probably have like big plans for episode 100. I don't think we've discussed it, but we should come up with something. So if anybody has any ideas or what they want to hear uh, for episode 100, maybe we uh, will entertain such suggestions. Yeah, we got but, plenty of time, plenty of time. Yeah, that won't sneak up on us at all. It's not like we'll be 20 minutes into recording episode 100 and someone will go, hey, wait a minute. Is this the 100th one? And then we'll like huh? actually celebrate on 102 because we don't count it right. That right. doesn't sound like us. No. Uh, yeah. So here we go. I'm a little tired. I just did. Uh, I'm. I've started Orange Theory, the workout class. Oh, Do you know what that is? Is that is that a place you go to? Yeah, it's a place. Okay. Uh, yeah. My brother had done it in New York. That's how I heard about it. See, and like Johnny, you run all the time, and I mm -hmm. I need to get in shape, but I I kind of need something to motivate me or i need like uh someone to tell me exactly what to be doing and how hard and how fast so that's that's what i'm doing and so i'm exhausted i'm not used to like actual exercise it's funny because you sometimes you think you're working out you know like because i've gone through versions of this yeah. but then it's like oh that's what being tired feels like i forgot <laughs> forgot <laughs> like when it's hard well, to what breathe. kind of what kind of exercise did you do it today it's mostly running. You would love it. Yeah, it's like a uh, treadmill for like half of it. And then they tell you like when to push and then when to like recover and then when to go all out. And then it's like kind of like intervals. And then oh, okay. the other half of it's like a rowing machine and then just sort of like exercises like with weights and stuff. And they, oh, okay. they tell you exactly what to do. But uh, it's very tiring. And you have to wear a mask in Oregon here. So it's like... Ooh. And I got the the KN95, Ooh. so it's not even a cheater mask. So I'm hoping I get my. Yeah, you know what out. I don't like about those? I don't know. Maybe yours is different, and maybe my head's just big. But when I wear my K95 or whatever it is, it hurts behind my ears because it pulls so tight. I know. Like I got to get a mask that goes around my head instead of on my ears because it just hurts after like ten minutes. During like the surges, I'll I'll double mask it, you know. And then you yeah. really get the ear pick. And you got two. It's like that thing where the, you put a million rubber bands around a banana yeah. until it snaps it. That's what it feels like. And it's just like really. Plus, I look like a dork ass with my ears <laughs> sticking out. So I yeah. like the ones what a, that. What a, look, check out that dork ass. Check, with the big check out that dork ass with his two masks. <laughs> pulling his ears off. But I like the ones that go around your head. I don't know why they aren't yeah, all like that's that. what I want to look for. I, I, I've never seen them. Oh, you know what yeah. I want to get? I want to get like a, like an S hook so I can take the regular ones and just kind of add the S hook behind my head because then there's no tension on my ears. Because sometimes I think it's because I have a big face, like I have a big fat head and face, and that's why they struggle to get to my ear. That's why it's pulling so hard on my ears, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. The, the barbers, I, you I have, have a bigger head than you. Huh? I, I bet I have a bigger head than you. Well, ego wise. <laughs> but I, at the bar <laughs> at the barber, they they have those S hook things. What you're talking oh. about? And they've done that to like oh. cut your hair around your ears, you know? Oh, nice. And keep your mask on. My, when you go to sports clips, they just have you hold it with your hand while they do your ears. <laughs> 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 Okay, hold your breath. <gasps> <gasps> We're taking your mask off. Oh, shit. Don't breathe. I've dropped my scissors. 
five second rule. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love that you go to sports clips. Yeah. Just not, can you? How ironic! It, How ironic! Can you turn it to TNT? I think they're replaying <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> no, it's the Super Bowl. We don't want to change the channel. Uh, not not to be not to be sexist. However, <laughs> I find it interesting because like every time I go to sports clips, it's all women working there and they're never talking about sports. You know what I mean? So is it a so thing? It's fitting. So it's not like I get it's not like, oh, this is going to be awkward. I don't know anything about sports and my barber is going to be talking to me about sports. I just go in there. They have sports all over the place, little lockers and stuff. And then the lady working my hair, you know, was like, hey, how's your day going? My son is loud. Do you have kids? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Not a lot of NFL draft talk. Right. Right. That's hilarious. They have lockers. It's really it's really like the. Uh, it's the full. It just shows you like you can't. You can try to create this like like this. It comes from that idea of the barbershop, right? And it used to be, yeah, you go to the barbershop with your guys and they give you the good shave. And then everyone's chatting, you know, talking about sports and they're arguing who's the greatest basketball player of all time. And so yeah. then this some moron comes around and is like, I'm going to recreate that and brand it and make it nationwide. But really, eventually what you end up with is like four Russian ladies who <laughs> know how to cut hair and you get, yeah. the, you know, in your super cuts, yeah. basically. That's the model. Then they have the lockers that are, and I, I had a bit, this is the a lockers. bit that I had that I tried for a while and it just kind of fell off. But like, cause they have the lockers that say clean rags and soiled. And I it was such a weird <laughs> soil. Don't you always think of like, Oh, that, Oh, that's where you put your shit diapers. Like, yeah. Why do you call them soil? Just say used. Or right. Soiled is soiled is like the last resort uh, for dirty. <laughs> you never want to, you, you never want to jump to soiled. <laughs> and that's how they have it labeled. It hair <laughs> like if places. you like a little dust kicks up on your shirt, like, Oh, I soiled my shirt. I should get it. Like, no, just, you got your shirt dirty. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to start using soiled more just to see the reaction. Oh. <laughs> your pants um, are a little soiled there. Yeah. Uh, you soiled your face. You got, little, you got a little mustard. You soiled your face. <laughs> soiled your face. What are you, German? <laughs> I like it when they soil my face. <laughs> it costs extra. Yeah, that's disgusting. Hey, uh, but I haven't got, I need to go oh. get my hair cut, actually. Maybe I'll go to Supercuts, try and force them to talk sports and go, hey, sports. Shut up about your kids. The sign out front doesn't say kids, kids, mom cuts. Okay. (laughs) It says sports clips. Yeah. Listen, broad. (laughs) So we're going to talk about the second round of the NFL draft and you're going to like it. Yeah. Uh, Hey, I didn't ask you last week. I wanted to ask, did you guys, do you guys celebrate Valentine's Day? Or no. Yeah, we okay. <laughs> That's actually funny because this is like. Or is that what the Venmo was for? <laughs> I knew you were gonna bring that up. <laughs> I first of all, Johnny is referencing. He like, and by the way, I don't even know how you saw that. That wasn't even new. That was like a, you were like going deep in my Venmo history or something. No, I wasn't looking at yours. I I had a Venmo. I had a Venmo son for for some for a show or something, and I. We've talked about how I don't know why Venmo has a friend request, but like there's a feed. So I paid him and it just showed up under that. Oh, and so you like, don't have that many that. Venmo friends. I think you and Christina are like the only people I've well, accepted a friend request. It wasn't a situation where I was like, I picked up the check and okay, you have to pay your half. That wasn't Heidi sent me some money on Venmo and it said food, dinner underneath, like dinner plates. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it was. It must have been like she she wanted to pay for dinner. We have separate checking. I guess that we should start there. We have separate checking. You have again. talked about that. Don't you guys split like your Netflix bill and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no. How dare you? No. No, we do not split our Netflix bill. 
We just have separate checking. Yeah. It's just easy. You're my only source for this. Uh, we we just randomly whoever have different bills. I don't know. Okay. I've got a lot more of them now since Ginger and she stopped, but she yeah. started working again now with the, so maybe she, we'll switch back. But uh, we just have different bills and then we have a joint savings account and the separate checking account. I don't know. It's just easier. But we don't normally Venmo each other for anything. It's just that I don't know what that was. It must have been that she wanted to, like, pay take me out for dinner, and then I didn't have – like, she didn't bring her wallet or something. She's like, oh, yeah. okay, I'll pay you for that. That's all I can think of. Sometimes, though, it is humiliating because, like, I'll, I'll bitch about – like, sh we have – like you mentioned, Netflix, HBO, yeah. Hulu, Disney+. Plus youtube tv oh, wow. and i think we had apple plus but i finally canceled that so we have like a lot of ways to watch television yeah movie. and then she'll still find shit on amazon that you have to pay for <laughs> and we have amazon prime but she won't even find the movie under and, and i'll go what we pay for so much how is there not something we want to watch on one of these free ones and she'll and then she'll buy it, and then she'll Venmo me the four dollars just to shut me up. So sometimes it's that too. That is hilarious. But uh, yeah, so and I, you're right because it's not even it shouldn't solve the argument. Her sending me money and I send her money, but who cares? It's all the same money. It doesn't make us any richer or poorer if she sends <laughs> me. But it is that's just how she ends the argument. So yeah, I don't know. But well, I forgot. I forget do you, why do you do Valentine Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. Valentine's so we kind of did the day of I had that horrible gig at the casino that I talked about last week. Yeah. So that was r very romantic. Get spit on by anti-vaxxers. Huh? And then um, but I kind of was like we didn't do cards or anything. I just was like she'd been talking about getting a massage passing this massage place. So I was like, okay, you go get a massage. That's my gift. You can go get a massage. <laughs> I didn't even get the gift certificate. It was like the laziest effort of all. It was just like, hey, it's Valentine's Day. You should go get that massage. And uh, I'll pay for it. I got, you know. But like you said, it's all the same money. So who cares? And that's it. Do you guys do it? But then, then we went to Edmonds last weekend because I had gigs. Edmonds, Washington is like this cute little fairy town oh. north of Seattle. And uh, we went out for dinner, nice dinner. And we nice. kind of, and we had a hotel and dropped Ginger off with my parents. So that was kind of like our Valentine's Day weekend, we yeah. called it. But that's what we did. What did you do? We don't, we don't, I, <laughs> we don't, we don't celebrate it. We talked a long time ago. I was like, like early in our dating, I was like, look, I'm not letting Hallmark dictate how yeah. oh, and when good and for you like, oh, okay yeah i agree so so we just don't do anything <laughs> why did you go actually no she got me a car like she you're like you're that's what that's reserved for like you're gonna get laid not <laughs> so we have <laughs> no romantic <laughs> yeah. no it's so i <laughs> save thirty dollars every year thirty dollars <laughs> <laughs> that's what you think guys are spending on valentine's day Hey, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> Inflation. Yeah. No, I think it's more now. <laughs> uh oh, that's great. So you don't I I'm will trying say to I... hammer away. I'm trying to hammer away on Mother's Day. See if we can Yeah, that that's up. another yeah. gotta get rid of that. So it's like hey, babe, come on. Come on. Hallmark. Your birthday? That's just Hallmark. Yeah, it's Hallmark, just Hallmark came. Oh. oh, you were born. I mean, we're going to let the yeah, capitalism cool. tell us to celebrate that. Yeah, we're not, uh, we're, not slave. we're not sheep. Yeah, don't be a sheep. Here's what I got we're, you for your not, <laughs> Here's what I got you for Valentine's Day. I'm going to free your mind from the shackles <laughs> of capitalism. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't mind. I kind of like I you know, it's fun. Sometimes it's fun to do 
plan stuff or I like going out to dinner mostly. Yeah. <laughs> so any excuse to do that. And then but that's the thing. I mean, we usually do what it sounds like you did where we'll around Valent- Valentine's Day. We'll go out for a nice dinner, just me and her. But like Valentine's Day is the it's it's, it's impossible. It's crowded and hard. Oh, to get I know. The, the, the day of is so stupid. Yeah, that's why stand up is great, because like New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, these horrible um, inflated, you know, restaurant uh, hotel yeah. nights are like it's such a scam. So I think I've probably worked more Valentine's Days than not. And so, we, yeah, that is the good thing about being a comic because you can just kind of celebrate it. Go, OK, we'll go do something on a night that it's not crowded and get a way better yeah. dinner for the same price or a, a bit cheaper. So yeah. that is true. I, I try to avoid the actual day of Valentine's day doing stuff, but yeah. this new year's Eve, my, my brother is getting married. So, which is great. On very, yeah. On new year's Eve. We're very excited oh, wow. about that in Boston. But it's kind of like the double whammy of like, that's usually a good money gig, you know, for stand up. Yeah. So that's yeah. out. And then also fly to Boston and stay at this fancy hotel. And so I don't know how he's going to pay me back for all this, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. We, my brother's getting married in Seattle. Oh, are you invited? Seattle. I am. I am. <laughs> good. When is it? So. That's in April. Oh, so, do you know what the I mean, plan I, is? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, he's gonna get married. Go. <laughs> I mean, like, are you go, you know where you're staying and all that stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. We got like a uh, Airbnb. We're sharing. Uh, what's the difference between an Airbnb and a Verbo? Are they the same? Oh, it's the same company? thing. Same thing, just oh, okay. different brand. Yeah, we're doing one of those with two of my sisters. So we got like a big house, so we're gonna stay there. Thursday through Sunday. Oh, yeah. you should send me send me the house. I want to see where it is. Okay. All right, all right. I'll tell you where to go. My sister has that info, so I'll <laughs> I'll have to get that for you. Oh, okay. I'll forget. You'll never do it. Don't worry about it. You'll never <laughs> send it. It's fine. I was just waiting for the don't worry about it. <laughs> oh wait, when in April? I'm gonna be in Seattle end of April. All right. Oh really? It's the end of April. It is the twenty. Well, we fly in the twenty first, and we fly home the twenty fourth. Uh did you come? I'll talk to my brother. I'll so, come up. Do you like chicken yeah. or fish? Which do you like? Uh, I'm a steak guy. Tell him to make an exception. Oh, no, I'll no, talk no. to fish. him. We'll fish. <laughs> That's specially made. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, yeah, I'll go. Give me the invite. Very cool. Stay at my parents. I'll house. just tell you know what. I'll tell Aaron. I'll be like, we're not gonna let capitalism tell us where to celebrate, and then you can take her spot. <laughs> we'll just have her stay back. At the I'll be your plus one. Yeah. <laughs> The cavalry's here. Yeah, I'll bring stickers. That'll be my gift. Nice. I'll tiny, bring tiny gift. stickers. Uh, wait, uh, there was something I wanted to say about Valentine's Day. Oh, okay, well, I don't know. So you guys didn't do anything for Valentine's Day. Oh, I know what I wanted to make sure we got to is finishing Kyle McClure's dentist yeah. story. Yeah. I had it up here. I, had, I wasn't going to forget. You weren't going to forget. Okay, good. I thought we were going to forget. But do you have it pulled up? Wait. The conclusion? Uh, no. no. You pull it up. No, but Basi- I remember the gist of it. Okay. Basically, no, you, we talked. I'll pull it up while you do that. You, we talked about it last week, but uh, <laughs> Kyle had this dentist work on his teeth, and then at the end of it, revealed it was a different person's chart that they were going off of the entire time. <laughs> but it involved getting teeth removed and stuff, so it was like horrifying. So we. We're on pins and needles. We kind of wanted to know. So what? Ha- just tell us what happened. What you remember? Well, yeah. So be- I mean, I, that was a very weird story because he left off in the beginning half that he had pain in those teeth. Right. It was like gut wrenching pain. So he was like in agony, and he went in, and they couldn't like it would hurt him every time they tried to put the thing in his mouth to get an X-ray. So he has no regret. He's glad they got taken out. He wanted them to get taken out anyway. So it was either a coincidence that they lined up with his teeth and Mark's teeth both needed to be removed or there wasn't a mix up or something. The dentist after was like, God damn, am I lucky? 
I am the lucky. <laughs> Jesus. You just cannot catch breaks like that. Well, I hope you feel better, Mark. I'm not Mark. Oh, shit. Oh, no, that's cool. Sh- Those were the two things they needed out. <laughs> what are the odds? Wow. Golly. <laughs> I should play the lotto tonight. Holy cow. Yeah. Anyway. He said, he said, since I'm not in any pain, I didn't see the need to file any kind of suit. But if I find out down the road, maybe I'm watching a, a special in 2020 <laughs> or E! True Hollywood Story on TV. It's all about some guy that got super rich named Mark, and it was all because of a file mix. Then I'll be pretty pissed. <laughs> I, I don't know what the scenario would be where this guy got rich because the files got mixed up. I would be more like Mark Sues. I would want if I'm Kyle, I'd want to find Mark and go, we should be friends. We had the exact same tooth ailment at the exact same time in our lives. Maybe we're like weird doppelgangers or something. Oh, I thought you meant like we should team up and sue the shit out of them together. (laughs) No, I mean, fine. They can sue. They can not sue. I'm just saying, isn't that amazing that they have the same? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Maybe they'd be friends. Maybe they're twins. Long lost twins. Okay. Well, Johnny, any other? Oh, uh, there was there was one other thing. Okay. I just wanted to talk about. I know we went over most of this over text, but it was like Disneyland being in Utah. Oh, my God. You're not giving me a heads up that this was like suburbia. This was like. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. what. First of all, give us the places you you were able to. Paint. I was going to have a checklist and I was going to text it to you to show all the places I hit. <laughs> I I texted you all the places that I did. You go. Of. Did you go to the place that was like just French fry? That's such a Utah thing. But it's like a French fry restaurant. I think it's pretty near. No, because I'd never heard of it. OK. Yo, yeah. You were going brand loyalty. Yeah, places. Brand loyalty chain franchise. I so I went to uh, wait. Let me get. Can I guess some yes. of them? Let me see how many. I'm gonna guess five. We'll see how many I hit. Okay. Okay. Chick Fil A, twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Jimmy John's. No, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Oh, that's fine. They that's don't fine. heat up their if they heat up their sandwich, I'd like it, but they they do hot ones, don't they? Nah, I don't know. I don't no, know. Whatever. Uh, but Wendy's. No, if I had more time. If I had yeah. more time, I swear to God. That was when I was disappointed. I didn't hit. Oh, uh, man. Okay, you just tell me the rest. Five guys. Oh, of course. God Five damn. Five guys. Five guys. Uh, and then where was the other one? Oh, God. I did see a movie. I saw I saw a movie. Um, so that was nice. Oh, where's the other food? I went to another food place. I can't remember what it was. It is just such. You're so right. It is such corporate. The good chain paradise and you in utah in general i mean and also they like they keep them pretty clean they run them well i think it's because there's just not a lot of alcohol there's just no bars like there's no focus on bars you know all the money goes into like movies and like dessert play they have like so many like just dessert places like a cupcake place cold stone cold yeah tons of ice cream places and yogurt and all that I remember there was by the other club. There's a baked potato restaurant. <laughs> and uh-huh. I would always like laugh. Like, How is this place still in business? But you know, in Utah, you can make it happen if you have a very specific idea for a fast food restaurant. Utah is the place to go. There's a great the um God. What is the name? There's a burrito chain there too. That's great. I'll think of it later, but. Uh, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good run. Chick-fil-A twice though is interesting. Chick-fil-A twice. There's a, pl- oh, uh, oh, you know, it was nice in the continental breakfast. They had that Belgian waffle maker. So I made like, three oh, of those. Yeah. oh I gotta be honest. I, I used to be so big on continental breakfasts. I mean, I had this bit about it for a long time mm-hmm. and everything. And, and Heidi has just boozed me out of continental breakfast. I just can't, I never do, do it mean? anymore. She made me two, like she made me a coffee snob. She made me a oh. food snob. Also, like it's harder for me to get up for it now, you know. Oh, I know. I had, it. I did have to get up. Like I didn't. I wanted to go back to bed, and I was like, oh, the cold. 
close in 20 minutes. I got to do it. Otherwise, I got to go buy food. But even a Belgian waffle? No, too, they're good. Those are good. That's by far the best thing. <laughs> but like I went, I actually did go to the, we were, when we, were, we, had, we were at this Best Western Plus. Very nice. Best Western Plus. Mm. And <laughs> and uh, I went down to the continental breakfast just because Heidi wanted like just something before we went, just basically like fruit before we went out to breakfast. There was no discussion of us actually eating at the continental breakfast. This was just to hold us over till we did a walk to the whatever $22 a plate breakfast place we're going to go to okay but i got one of these egg frittata things because i was like i don't know a little protein maybe hold me over because it's probably going to take forever before we get this next one and it had corn it was a it was a vegetable eggs frittata and had corn in it i was like jesus christ what are we doing (laughs) it was so unpleasant (laughs) i've never had corn and eggs before it was disgusting yeah that's a weird combination Uh. yeah so, but the shows in Utah were good. Is your first time? Yeah, the shows were great. Yeah, the second one was so I was going to make a joke because the I mean, you've been there like the showroom is very far from where you walk in. You walk down the zigzag hall. So I walk in. I was going to be like, oh, sold out show. And before I even could say that, make it a joke. He was like, yeah, we're sold out. It's like, what? Good for you. No, I that mean, was not that was not. Sure it had, I'm sure it had nothing to do with me, but <laughs> well, I'll take credit. Yeah, I'll take it. That was not my experience, but uh, I, I riffed. I, it's so funny because I, I was talking about Taco Bell because I have a bit about Taco Bell and like the prices no. and all that. Really? And then, yeah, <laughs> actually, I have like three, I my. It's funny because I have to specify when I when I write Taco Bell on my set list, I have to say which Taco Bell bit because I have so many Taco Bell man prank, Taco Bell prices. But now the new one was and I and I was basically just because it, it came to me from our podcast as i was talking about i just was went on a spiel about how it's bullshit that taco bell has the reputation it does have oh uh, yeah. well, just off the top of my head and it went, i was gonna send you the audio of it but i was just like because the audience was laughing and i got like offended on taco bell's behalf i was like no no no, no that's not i do like taco bell <laughs> hey shut up You're this is serious <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was fun yeah it's great buddy i had a great actually the shows i did were very fun as well it was this uh fundraiser for the public schools in edmonds and uh is at this nice theater edmonds center for the arts and it was me and uh kermit i saw the picture yeah yeah, kermit apio put it together and these other two young comics named barunji barunji and uh aaron um oh what's her last name Aaron, I, I'll think of it in a second. But then, uh, and this guy, Dwayne Goat, is just so funny, too. And he, he was, like, one of the big headliners when I started. He would hang out at the club. Okay. And he would, I, 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 we talked about this, but he would always shit on me. Because I'd come in from the Sundays. I'd come in, I'd go to the Seahawks game. And he's not a sports guy, either. It made me think of you. But I was, I'd wear, I'd have the jersey on and the hat. Because I was just at the <laughs> game, you know. I wasn't just watching it. I was at the yeah, game. Yeah. And he had, oh, he just unload on me oh did you guys play well today <laughs> wow are you on the team now they just I never got old for him but That's funny. he was so it was fun catching up with all those guys and it was like one of those rare things where you actually get to hang out with comics that yeah. you like know and like and have like a bunch of, so it was like kind of it was very, felt probably the most fun since covid like hanging out with comics yeah. i've had so that's awesome it was great where, where does Kermit live now? He lives near there in like um, Edmonds, Shoreline, Mount Lake Terrace, North Seattle, oh, basically. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But yeah, it was a good, cool. good event. Uh, they write a bunch of parody songs. It's pretty funny. And uh, it was like a nice theater show. I'm supposed to get the footage from it, but we'll see. Oh, cool. You know, you know how that stuff goes. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, should we get into it? That was pre-show banter, everybody. Pre-show banter. No appliance talk. To- oh, I'll do a quick appliance talk today. Oh, please do. <laughs> We're getting the new dishwasher, and Ooh. the one difference will be it won't have that top rack. You know what I'm talking about? 
The third where, rack or the, the third top? rack oh, on the top where you put that. knives. Yeah. You ever use that? We don't have that. You don't have it. You don't need it. Let me tell you something. I have like knives in there that have gone through like 15 cycles before I remember there's something up there. And then I go, where is that? And I finally pull it. So then they were like, this dishwasher we're getting, it's like, oh, it doesn't have the third rack. And that was a big consternation. And it finally hit me. I was like, I don't want that third rack. Do you? Yeah, because we just put the knives on the second, on the yeah, top put rack them of on our the top rack. Yeah. yeah, they don't take up that much room. Go so. between the cups. Let yeah. the kids find them. Yeah. Nice. Well, congratulations. We yeah. Yeah. No third rack for my dishwasher. I, uh, it should be coming tomorrow, so that'll be Costco good. Costco delivering and installing? Well, yeah, but the Costco will deliver, and then they, it's free for us, but they get a third-party install and takeaway. So I had to kind of do some coordinating because those guys. Oh, okay. So, so they just be, drop it off? and then They just drop it off. There'll be one night, hopefully just one night, where it's sitting in a box. Okay. Taking up a bunch of room, and then the installers come the next day, so. Cool. Oh, exciting. It'll be, exciting. It'll be very exciting because every night now Heidi starts the dish. That's like you don't hear you just settle into chores. This isn't yeah. like a man woman thing. I do a lot of dishes, but she starts the dishwasher at night. Yeah. But it's so busted because the electronics of it. You basically have to slam it <laughs> just to get the to, to light up. But it takes a bunch of times so every night. I'm like lying to bed. I go to bed early or I try to. And I. <laughs> It's like 1045 and all I hear is like, boom, sh, boom, sh, boom, <laughs> just like ginger sleeping <laughs> right through it. But she has to slam it so loud. It's like gunshots going off before oh bed. My God, so that is hilarious. Hopefully now this will be a new phase of our life. But OK, yeah. let's get into it. Let's get into it. You want to go first or you want me to go? Why don't you go first? I feel like I I just did appliance talk, so. Or do you want me to oh, go so first? All right. No, I'll go first. That's great. All yeah. right. <clears throat> oh, this is very fitting as I've been flying a lot and have a lot of flying coming up. I firmly believe, now maybe you'll think this is ridiculous. Maybe everyone will, but I think it's logical. If your flight gets delayed, okay, to the point of you either miss your connection or you don't get home, you know, when you should, like the day you should or whatever, I think... The airline should do everything in their power short of sucking your dick <laughs> to make sure that your life is 100% comfortable, including they should buy you just anything you want from the airport. They should pay for your airport parking, which will be higher now since your car has to uh, sit there longer. Never you thought know? about that. And and this is the this is the kicker. If they you know if they're like oh we're trying everything we don't we don't have any flights that go from, you know, Denver to Madison the rest of today, then they should take they should have to get on another airline and just pay out of their pocket to put me on, fucking Delta or Unite or whatever. Get I always wondered about that because do you think that would be a beneficial relationship across the board? Like so you'd say. Oh, we can't put you on a Delta flight. We're American. We can't put you on a Delta flight, you know. But then there's going to be times where Delta needs to put people on American flights, you know. You think there would be a yeah. little bit more cooperation because they all know they're going to screw it up at some point. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, I'll I'll back you up on that. I think there's especially on the parking thing. I've never thought about before because I'm not an airport parker. I've never done the airport parking. Mm -hmm. Uh. The, so you always Uber or get a ride? Yeah, I was Uber or get a ride or take the train or something. Uh, the um, what was I gonna say? Oh, you're so right about the connection. There isn't enough respect for the like the their flight is late, and not because of weather. Mm -hmm. Take weather out of it, but like because they just screwed up. The pilot was late or the catering was late or something. And then it's like, even if it's only late, like 45 minutes, that's enough to make your connection screwed, yeah. you know? Yeah. And then there's no, like, feeling of, because then by the time you get to the next gate, they treat you like you missed your flight because you slept in. There's no, <laughs> like, acknowledgement of, like, you had yeah. no control over this. So we're so sorry. You know, I was like, oh, well, you should have been here on time. 
You know, that's always the attitude. Yeah. And then you, and I hate it because I have to run. That's always like Dallas or something I'm like sprinting through the Dallas airport to make this connection. And then people are looking at you like, oh, it's like that Geico commercial or whatever. Like, oh, you should have left earlier or whatever. And it's like, no, it's when you see people sprinting nine times out of ten, it's because of the connection because they yeah. screwed it up. Yeah, the, it's oh, my God. And the worst thing is, like, you're sitting on the flight. You're, you're 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 getting on your first flight and you're like we're leaving we're leaving 45 minutes late this flight is delayed i have a connection so you're like stressed and miserable for for three and a half hours yeah. until oh, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. oh i've made it you know i you know you can't relax until you know but i don't go here's the way oh go ahead well, go ahead <laughs> all right i'll go ahead <laughs> so by, here's by episode 100 by episode 100, we're going to be really good at this. <laughs> the chemistry. No, but listen, so this is this is how this is how we were almost late. So I'm sitting there, my first flight. I'm in Madison. And they said, all right, guys, we oversold the plane by three seats. So if anyone wants a $600 voucher, Come on up and make you have flexible travel plans, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, huh, all right, whatever. I have a show. I can't, you know, so I'm sitting there. I don't know how much longer later, 20 minutes later. All right. Um, well, we still need two people and the voucher is uh, $800. So if you want an $800 voucher, you know, and I'm like, what? Well, oh, it's just going up. Okay. All right. That makes sense. I guess whatever. And then like 20 more minutes later, she goes, hey, folks. We cannot leave the ground until we get this resolved. We have one oversold seat still that we need, and it got all the way up to $1,100 voucher. And finally, the guy was like, one guy just you know sitting with all of us waiting was just like, ah, oh, fuck it, whatever. And everyone started clapping because that was what was holding us up. Why we wouldn't leave is because they oversold this. So we're all just sitting there like, well, we can't give up our ticket. We got to be somewhere. And they're just like, hey, this is on you guys. You guys figure it out. I know. We're not leaving until one of you fucks yourself. That attitude. I couldn't believe it. It's the attitude more than anything. That's also funny. Like, why wait? Why do they wait so long between, like, you know what I mean? You're talking yeah. about $300 difference. That's nothing to these airlines, you know, compared yeah. to what it costs them if the flight's late, you know, and then they have to reimburse everybody's. Just do it like an auction. Just go, all right, $600. No takers, 700 Nope, 800 you know? And then, like, maybe people would wait. <laughs> I know. But, but at some gamble, point, but they it's, might it's, lose it. It's like a reverse auction because sometimes people are going to go, oh, shit, I'm just going to take 1000 I don't know. Someone else might jump in on this. You know what I mean? Exactly. It'd be more exciting. It'd be more fun. And it'd be quicker. Yep. That's what they should have done. I was like, why? What was this big gap between? I thought they got to figure it out. Why we've we been sitting here for 10 minutes. And then they, they, they're just like, they act, I, they do that all the time. They act like it's your fault. Like, like they, you'll be delayed on the tarmac for like an hour. And then someone will get up to go to the bathroom and like, Oh, uh, we will not be able to take off until everybody's <laughs> seated with their seatbelt. It's like, yeah, we fucking were seated for an hour. No, we didn't take off. I got to take a piss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would, I yeah. That's what airline were you on? Uh, United oh, going of course. there, American. Jesus. See, I, I, if See, it's not what do I tell you? On Expedia, I know you got to be loyal. I fucking hate them all. Fuck them all, except for Southwest. I hate them all. I've I've tweeted the most vicious shit about every single airline except for Southwest. And every time I do, I tag Southwest and say, "Why can't you be more like Southwest?" So they see it. But United is the worst. They're they're by far the worst of the major. What's the one? You're like Delta loyal, or what's the no, one? No, I'm you're Alaska. Are? I'm Alaska loyal. Oh, Alaska is good. I, I just don't fly that very much. It's hard. It's I hard if you don't. Way. You gotta live on the West Coast. I mean, it's it's hard yeah. if you don't live. But I mean, uh, uh, Delta is better than I think. It's it, to me the definitive ranking. See, I don't fly Southwest, mm -hmm. but Delta is second after Alaska, then American, then way, way down is United. And then it's like Frontier oh, yeah. and Spirit and all that bullshit. Yeah. yeah. 
But See, I didn't know there was that much of a discrepancy between American and United. Yeah. Don't fly United. I got a flight tomorrow, and I buy, like, I buy, you know, I try to get it cheap. I know you, I know you, your stance is <laughs> get rid of the cheap, let's get rid of the riffraff to all the poor people. But I fucking, I go on Expedia, and I get the poor guys, and they're like, you cannot check a bag. You, you, if you try to check a bag, you will have to pay the $35 to check a bag, but then we will also charge you the $25 because we told you you can't and you are anyway. <laughs> so there's like two fucking charges. So here's what I did on my, I would, this is what I did on this last trip is I put my backpack inside my duffel bag, which was still huge because it's full of clothes. And then my backpack full of all my shit, my CDs and computer. And it was like a packed duffel bag, put it over my shoulder, put it under my coat and I made sure it was like on the side away from the person taking the tickets so they don't see it when I scan my phone and walk on the plane. And then I just have to whip it but off. But you get find two, a you get a backpack and a, a bag. No, not if you do the ticket I got. They're like, no, this is basic economy. You don't even get a carry on. You get a personal item. Oh my the God, The only thing you Johnny. get has to fit under a seat. <laughs> just pay I've never done it before. $15. Last week. It would be 70 bucks. No, but, I, but what I'm saying is oh, how much cheaper is it to just buy the ticket through the airline site than this Expedia thing? Like, are you really oh, getting same. a deal? Know, it's the same. Yeah. So, it's but the same. If, so find the flight you want and then go buy, buy it direct from them because then you don't have to deal with a lot of that shit. I'm telling you. Yeah, but isn't it United's rule? It's not travel. Travelocity doesn't give a shit if I carry a bag on. They're just dictating. Maybe what I don't know that. I United sounds horrible. I just I don't know what to tell you, buddy. It's weird because it's the same with this trip. I'm going to L.A. Uh, this weekend or tomorrow. I fly to L.A., but it's it's United one way and then America home because that's just how it worked on the you know. The Discount Bandit website. <laughs> discount Bandit. Uh, the uh, why? Like, why are you splitting? Because it just drives me crazy. Do you do you at least keep track of your miles and stuff? Do you at least have like a number and everything? And no, I should. I mean, I do for. Oh one, but I never my god! I fucking hate that. Uh, in L.A., I did. In L.A., I did because I flew all the time. But before we moved to L.A., I would drive everywhere. So when I flew, I was like, ah, whatever. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to remember my password to every fucking airline. Fuck it. And now it's just been too long where it's like I should have been keeping track. It's like a mailing list. You should. We should have been doing it for 15 years, but I'm not going to start today. It's never you know? too late to start. It's never too late to start. I I've, I've, I'm, pathe I'm pathetic with the mailing list, but I'm trying. I started. And you know the saddest part about the mailing list is when you're like, oh, I actually have one for Bozeman. Time to like I'm going to Bozeman uh, in a couple weeks. Yeah. And I time for me to send out my <laughs> email and it's to four people. And then you do it yeah. on <laughs> you do it on MailChimp. <laughs> and then it's like it tells you the stats. Like, oh, twenty five percent of the people opened your email. Zero clicks. Would you like to see more detailed analytics about your email campaign? No, I would not, MailChimp. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> No, I would not. And here's my monthly fee. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I do oh, the free. Man. I do the free mail chip. But yeah. Uh, but I do pay to maintain the email list on the other. Th whatever. It's a long story. But yeah. uh, no, it's never too late to start. You gotta keep track of those miles. If there's anything I can, I can convince you of. Because even those flights, what? just going. Okay, so if you think about it, you flied, you flied, you flew to utah and back you could have flown american both ways and now you're going to la and back american both ways that's probably enough miles for like a free flight somewhere just those two trips no way sure are you serious yeah because what is Four, it from that two from round Ma trip tickets that's well, like you a probably, tire you sale. made you made connections right there's yeah. no direct madison to salt lake city is there no yeah they were both through denver okay so it's probably like I'm guessing 1,500 miles, 18. I mean, it might be are around miles two. actually miles? Do they mean miles? Yeah, miles are one-to-one. Miles one. Flown, flown, miles flown are one-to-one. One. Sometimes, and if you got any sort of status, see, you would know this if you weren't a stupid dumbass. I, I had Southwest. <laughs> I was on A-plus list Southwest. Woo! 
but you start getting before, you start getting anyone. multiple times the miles you fly when you're like uh, once you start moving up in the program so then you get two times the miles flown and so it's like it it's like a I don't know exponential or whatever but so you're going to uh. It's, let's say 2,000 miles to Utah. It's probably 2,000 miles to L.A. So it's 4,000 there, 4,000 round trip both times. It's 8,000 miles. I mean, you probably need at least 10 or 12 for a for a free trip somewhere. Yeah. That's one free flight. I mean. That's for, yeah, I should. You're right. That's more, you're that's right. more than what you're, you're, I'm not, that's more than what you're saving. Laziness. By buying these economy tickets where you're not allowed to. <laughs> Bring my Eat. shoes. <laughs> I had to wear shoes on the plane. <laughs> do you um, ever do you ever take a dump on the plane? I mean, I would if I had to. I have no issues um, pooping anywhere. I did for a yeah. long time when I was a kid. I used to get like cons uh, so bad I would not poop. I like had a fear of it or something. I'd get like constipated. It would be so bad, and then. Now, I don't know. I'll go anywhere. Yeah. It's nice once you realize that, once you reach that point in your life where you're like, whatever, I'm taking a dump. You got to go, it's man. so freeing. And, like, most of the <laughs> a lot of the times when I have to go, I mean, it's not really a choice. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go. <laughs> There's very few times where you're, you're going like, one way or the other. Yeah. I mean, like, or I don't know. I'll just be, like, extremely uncomfortable for how much longer until yeah. I get to my hotel. I mean, I guess you could wait to the airport bathroom at least, but nah. If oh, I have when to go. I was in the airport, I saw, I saw it was like a scene out of Curb Your Enthusiasm. There was a guy in a wheelchair, yelling, yelling at whoever was in the handicap stall. And he was like, "Hey, oh. whoever in the handicap stall, you got a guy. I got a guy. You got a guy in the wheelchair waiting here. I'm gonna miss my flight. I need to use that stall." Oh okay, God! I didn't come out and come out, and I was washing my hands, and I was just kind of stalling because I wanted to see how this unfolded. Finally, the guy came out and just acted like, acted like he didn't even see him. He just went to the. It was you know just a normal you know just a guy, not a handicapped guy, walks over to the stall, washes his hands, and he's just like, Doo -doo -doo. there wasn't a handicap. Look, you person. gotta, you gotta apologize in that situation, but I feel mm -hmm. like it's not the same as taking a handicapped parking spot. It's just not the same. Like if I get to a bathroom, there's sometimes there's only two stalls. There's the regular stall and a handicap stall. And if the regular stall is op occupied, I don't know anybody. Yeah. If you have to take a dump, I don't know anybody who's not just gonna go oh, yeah. into the handicap stall. You're just taking the right. chance. And if it so <laughs> happens that then this you guy, apologize. you apologize, and that's yeah. just life. I mean, yeah. this this guy in the wheelchair, I'm sure it's very frustrating and annoying to him when that and he's got enough hardship in his life but i don't really see much momentum to make a change there i don't think the campaign yeah. to get people to not use the hand because there's just not enough stalls at airports sometimes yeah i mean this one had a lot but they were all full i mean it, it wasn't full. like he went in there because he wanted yeah and i would be mad yeah, if yeah. like if somebody was waiting if let's say there's three stalls and one of them's a handicapped stall and then two were full, and then there's like a line of guys waiting, and no one was using the handicap one. And then like, I have to be the guy to go. Uh, like I'd be mad at them for not using it, you know, because you're slowing down the whole. <laughs> we should be going three at a time here. That's when you just kind of limp yourself. You skip yeah. the line like. Ugh. Oh my god! Thanks I worked with. Open for me, guys. Speaking of Utah, you know Arvin Mitchell. He lives in Utah now. He's a comedian. Uh -huh. I did a military tour yeah. with him. One time, he would do that to get on the plane first. When we were flying around oh, Europe, really? I swear to God, he would limp. You know when they when they call for people who yeah. need time to get you on the plane? Yeah, I guess you don't have to show anything. He would limp up there, cause cause you he wanted the overhead bin space. Cause we had no status on these flight. You know, like you, he had no <laughs> status because we're flying these airlines we never fly. Right. So he's like, I'm always, he's, I'm always uh, zone nine. Yeah. Okay, you oh. two assholes, you can get on now. I would be so embarrassed to be seen with you at the airport. We can <laughs> never fly together. <laughs> I, I, I know him. We do a podcast oh, yeah. together, but I promise you, we're not. Uh, he's, 
you know. <laughs> if we flew together somewhere, I'd be like, okay, save me a seat, <laughs> and I'll see you in an hour when I board. I don't. I, he's not really. He's just joking around. He's I don't not know really his own nine. He's, it's a, just a joke. Because uh, <laughs> I go. I mean, they, I, they don't ask when he would limp up there. No, they don't ask. I mean, can you imagine? Imagine the 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 front desk person with that confidence going. I'm not buying it. It's like the guy in the stall. I mean, like, ah, bullshit. Anyone could get a wheelchair. Prove huh? it. <laughs> I mean, who, who's <laughs> taking that risk? Yeah. I would love to see it. A good point. I don't have the balls to do it myself, but that's, no. I mean, if he does, good for him. Yeah. He, of, do you do you just laugh watching him do it? Yeah. A couple of times I think I went up with him because I was like, well, he's taking all the risk here. And then I'm like, I'm, you know, because you get to go as a group. If like one of your group yeah. needs more time. So I was like, I, I'll go with you. And then if they call him out, I go, oh, my God, you've been lying your whole life about this limp that I've known you. This huh? is horrible. How dare you do that? And just play dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a victimless yeah. crime though because i mean who are you really you're not taking a handicapped parking spot in that situation you know you're just getting on the plane sure. yeah you're right even if they're even if there's four other handicapped people they're still getting on before everyone else you should do that when you when you're zone nine and you fly economy <laughs> poor peon class <laughs> just limp then you get on the plane first you're not they're not gonna worry about they're probably not going to call you out for like carry on bags and stuff either. And yeah. limping solves a lot of problems. So you, can't, you can't bring that bag. That bag has my wheelchair in it. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> my prosthetic <laughs> limbs are in there. <laughs> my backups. My ba limping solves like in all your. My real ones <laughs> fail me. <laughs> I always take a backup. <laughs> <laughs> limping solves all your problems at the airport like if you're late for your flight if you limp they'll just wheel you through security and stuff you get to skip the line yeah uh. <laughs> anyway it just depends oh, yeah. what are your scruples you know how many scruples do you have i yeah, think i i think again? scruples are like uh shame kind of i think like, you know well, what would i be too ashamed to do yeah, like would you limp? I don't think I would do it. I think I'd I mean it I've I've cut the line like if I was gonna miss my flight, it was and again, this is because of the connection. It wasn't because I was late. People hear this, they think, Oh, you're an asshole, you cut the line because you slept in. No. Yeah. The the airline made me about to miss my connection. So I've gone up, just walked right past everybody at TSA and everything and just gone, Hey, I'm gonna miss my flight, I gotta go. And they they ultimately just let you do it. You just have to be like willing to do that. Yeah. So you don't really have to limp to do <laughs> it's more devious. Yeah, I think me and Aaron have done that once where we're just like but we like said to every single person as we push past, Hey, sorry, is it cool? I mean we're we're doing it, but we are is it cool yeah. if we if you our our flight is, you know. You just I did that because like I was flying internationally and landed in Chicago and then there was no way to just blow past everyone at once, like just walk around them and cut. I had to yeah. like do what you were talking about, and that that's exactly what I did. I just kept, I just had like a speech, like like a guy in the subway is like, "I'm sorry, everyone. I'm about to miss my flight. If I'd missed this, I've been gone for 18 days. I have a young child at home. Do you mind if I?" And then the, no one's even listening. As you're not even waiting for a response. <laughs> not even looking at anybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. I'm back. Well, I feel back. I, I'm backing you up, but of course these airlines are horrible. But the one thing I will say is just don't fly United anymore. Have a little pride. All right, starting. Believe in yourself. After tomorrow, Be like me. I, I've gone full the other way. I'm like in all the programs and with the credit cards. I'm going to lounges, and it's, it just changes the whole way you your travel experience. Yeah, I've never gone in the line. I've never been in an airport long. I mean, I guess I have, but like, I don't want to fucking relax in the in the airport. I just I want to get the fuck where I'm going and go. You it's know. Wrong. Life's about the journey, my friend, not the destination. <laughs> You're going to spend your journey in the fucking Delta Lounge? Yeah. It's better than spending it in the, in the crowded 
uh, smoking section of the United Economy Group, <laughs> where they herd you Zone people nine. to. Zone nine. <laughs> All right. Uh, right, What do you need? Here's what I need backup on. So I think I told you about this. I can't remember. But, like, I I currently cannot get into my PlayStation. I can't play my PlayStation. Oh, yeah. Because you you have to. It got hacked. It got hacked. And then they don't. No one will believe that I'm me. There's no way for me. I've tried a million ways. I've dealt with all their customer service. It's just they won't. It's just we're we're at an impasse. I don't know what else to do other than just sell my PlayStation and move on with my life. And so uh, what I need backup on, despite how horrible the customer service is, all that, whatever, that's a given, right? Is that so now there's this meta. Do you know about the metaverse? Are you aware of the metaverse? Is this like... Um... No, what? I, I it's like, it's so that... Facebook has... And they're like transitioning slowly, it seems. But like the new thing will be other than rather than being on your computer and just like posting. Right. You'll have uh-huh. these virtual you'll have the virtual reality helmet on. And then everything it's you like do. That episode of the office wherever it's online. Right. Yeah. It's like your, your other life. Yeah. It'd be your other life. And so you're it's shopping like, like you don't just go to Walmart in the store. You go to Walmart in the metaverse, and then you literally pick up. You're walking the hallways, and you're picking up what you need or whatever at Walmart, and then it just gets shipped to you or whatever, right? Or you okay. see a movie. You actually walk into a movie theater. They're selling real estate in the metaverse, like digital real estate in the meta. So it'll just be like real life. So essentially, we're all heading towards whatever movie that is, where you just spend. Yeah, idiocracy or this player ready one or whatever. Well, you just yeah, yeah. Your life is shit. Your real life sucks ass. You're flying Delta. You're flying United (laughs) Zone Nine everywhere. It, but in the metaverse is where you're investing all your time and resources to make that life good. That's what everyone's metaverse. You're flying Alaska. Yeah, you're flying Alaska (laughs) Comfort Plus, my friend. <laughs> so just premium class premium in. class is alaska oh, delta okay. is comfort plus but uh here's here's my problem with that that's why i don't think it's gonna work and this is just sounds like an old guy saying like the new thing doesn't work but because you can get locked out like they can't fix this shit people get locked out of their instagram accounts all the time and it takes months and months for them to get convinced that they're the real Imagine if you got locked out of your your whole life, your metaverse life. If someone hacks that and steals yeah. everything, it'd be like getting your life stolen. Someone sleeping right. with your wife digitally, you know, that's not you. Someone if you're if everything is on there that is going to be your life, you, you need Wait, a so way you, to secure you, it. What do you think you need backup on? I need backup on that the metaverse won't work because oh, oh yeah. hackers that's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, I just don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the reasoning behind of why it wouldn't work, but I totally agree. It wouldn't work. It's just I just I, think like they haven't figured out like that's the one thing they haven't figured out because they like banking's all moved online. I get it. Like everything's moved online, other than like voting, but they've not figured out a good way for me to just convince them that I'm me. Like I talked about yeah, the how has, how has how has banking went online? Like if you get locked out of your bank, you can you can reset. Why can't Sony apply that to their accounts? I know. Why can't they figure the it out? I guess because it just matters more. I guess because like if someone, if like someone really did hack all my bank accounts and steal all my money, I would go to Wells Fargo and just start blasting. <laughs> like you know i mean this is like it's annoying like i can't play the stupid video games anymore but like it's not enough for me to call my congressman you know here's what you do this is what this is my advice this is outside of your topic just to get you back into playstation have luke have my brother luke the dentist call and say he's you give him whatever information they would ask you and he will take no bullshit 
because that's no, but this is the problem. I've there had is, him. I, I've had him do that for me before. He knows all the tricks. He puts it on them. He will not break the silence. You let them. I know. You always make them speak first. Okay, but here's but my thing. You've done that, and they hang up on you. No, they don't. Even, there is no. There is no. Unless I'm missing something, which is very possible, but you can't even get to a person. There is no phone. There is no way to call PlayStation support. They have a Twitter account, and they have that you're supposed to be able to ask help for, which I've sent like spam them with like five thousand messages. They don't respond, or they have this online chat. And the online chat, they'll eventually just get to the point where they close me out. They're like, eh, and they exit it. And I have to start all over and tell someone new. And then they say. Oh, it looks like you've been chatting a lot with us today. We're going to put you on a break because they think like they don't want me to. They're tired of me. So I don't even know. Sounds like they took a page out of the Menards book. So there's just no way to like actually get someone on the phone. I feel like if I could get someone on the phone, maybe I could convince them, you know, like what you said. But they. I, you're not angry enough. I think you need to start a movement like. You got to be like, that's infuriate. Like, that's how Black Lives Matter started. People were mad enough. You got to get a bunch of people together. You got to start a movement. So you got to do, Andrew. <laughs> yes. You got to make a difference. Just like Black Lives Matter. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to like, maybe I'm trying to use it as a sign. Like, I just shouldn't be playing video games anymore or something but it was it you should tell heidi that you're not mad at, that i'm not mad enough because you she was like what the fuck is going on when I, when they first like started exiting out on my chats and then i oh, couldn't get back get pissed no i would she was like oh, what is would. wrong with you because i was like losing my mind oh yeah well does she know there's games at stake here yeah i know and then i have to explain why she's like oh is it like our credit card is it the gas bill it's like it's very important is what it is. It's NBA 2K19. I Hello. I wanted to play God of War one more time before the new one comes out. Is that game great? Oh my god! I saw so a trailer good. for that. See, this is, is the problem. Is now you're making. We're talking about it. It's making me really want to get back, oh, sucked back in, and try. And if I try, I'll fail, and then I'm going to be frustrated. Miss. I was reaching this point of zen, I... of detachment about it. Well, this was you. You brought it up as a topic. I know. But my this is the problem with all this shit is if you put too much like I know people who got locked out of their Instagram accounts for two months and they lose their minds. They go crazy. They can't because they're too much of their life is yeah. valued. So if you go into this metaverse where it's like every every oh, yeah. thing and you get hacked out of that or locked out of that, you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, if they, yeah. If it does, well, I bet there will be people that do that. That is, that there's going to be there's going to be That's virtual everyone. reality stand up shows, you know, wait till we have yeah. to do those. Oh my God. Yeah. Get ready, buddy. <laughs> Get ready for this shit. It's going to be bleak. <laughs> oh, I had. Oh, my God. All right. Well, I can save that for post show banner. We should wrap this up. Uh, yeah, let's wrap up this turd. Let's wrap up this turd. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'll call episode 100. <laughs> we wrapped up a turd. Uh, oh, but speaking of turds, that's what I was going to say about the public bathroom thing. I had a bit for what, what I was like. Some people are scared to poop in uh, public restrooms. I'm the opposite. I don't like to poop at home. Like, I don't want to do that filth in my own house. You know, I try to poop as physically far away from my apartment as possible. Uh, why? Did, which which album is that on? Uh, no, I don't think it made it. <laughs> Didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut to any album. Uh, All right, buddy. Oh, let's uh, right, buddy. What do you plug, plug some shows. I will be in uh, Bozeman, Montana. I've just been in lovely St. Paul. Hopefully that went well. I'll be in uh, Bozeman, Montana, March uh, 4th, Friday. And then I will be in... Oh, you know where I'm going to be? The Bend Theater. Whitewater. March in Wisconsin. Oh, the Bend Theater. In West yeah. Bend. 
Wisconsin, the Ben Theater, March 11th. And March 10th, I think, I'm going to see my good buddy, Johnny Beaner. That's right. And March 11th, you might see, if you go to the show, you might see Johnny Beaner sitting in the audience watching Andrew, maybe. Yeah. It's not what you will see. Judging. I will be yeah, judging and shaking my head. <laughs> I will be at the St. Louis Fun. I will be actually. Oh, no, this is. I will have just been at the Slow Comedy Festival when you hear this, but I'll be at St. Louis Westport Fun Bone March 17th through the 20th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. All right, buddy. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been a <laughs> very fun episode. Uh, remember, we're about to do post show banner. You got to be on the Patreon to enjoy that. But other than that, that's it. Star review. We back up with what you need. And this has been the Calvary. <laughs> <laughs> we got it down. Episode 100. <laughs> <laughs>